Okay, so earlier in the week, we had a rather excellent, I think, video from Gamers Nexus where Steve Burke was talking to Intel's Tom Peterson about um, additions that have been made to the Present One benchmarking tool, um, specifically to address the concept that um, maybe frame time isn't the be all and end all of measurements when it comes to addressing performance. And there was a welcome focus on uh, the bane of our existence, um, hashtag stutter struggle. Now, Alex, mm -hmm. uh, you watched the video. I think we all watched the video. Uh, it's definitely a step in the right direction. But correct me if I'm wrong here. Well, we'll talk about the animation rate stuff uh, presently. Sure. Um, I'm interested in this specifically um, because it was presented in the context of benchmarking within the context of, you know, ascertaining the performance of a CPU or GPU. But I actually think that this is probably going to be of more importance uh, to game reviews rather than yes. uh, ascertaining the performance of CPU and GPUs. Uh, but first of all, can you talk us through the things that are actually new here in benchmarking terms, why they're important? And, you know, this whole thing that was coming up in the video, the, the, the key intro was basically that frame rate and frame time isn't important anymore. This is kind of <laughs> something new and more important, which I'm kind of certainly in partial agreement with, but I'm curious about your thoughts. So I would say, uh, I mean, even Tom Peterson says, uh, they're making the joke about like, this is the hook, line, and sinker of the video, bury the lead, whatever. Uh, the whole point is that uh, frame time stuttering, frame time, it gets you to about 90% of the way there to say that there's an issue with a game. If there's a great difference between one frame's frame time and the next. And... I think framers, uh, framers, gamers nexus in the past has said that they, they consider something like a four millisecond difference between frames or something like that to be some sort of substantial amount that you can maybe see or feel. I think that is something that Steve has talked about in a video before, yep. if, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I agree with that sentiment and I think it's great. Uh, but the frame time is only going to say, how long did this frame? Uh, take to render and present versus the next frame. But it, what it doesn't actually say is whether or not the motion represented in these frames as time stamped by the CPU and which was used to render that frame is actually in sync with the frame time itself. Um, because if you think about it, though they can actually come off time from one another and it can create it so that, yes, Let's, for example, say that there's two 16.6 .6 millisecond frames right next to each other. What if one actually was based on a CPU timestamp for the frame itself that was slightly longer than 16.6 .6 milliseconds or shorter or whatever? You would have it so even though the frames are coming out within a similar amount of frame time, they could have different values of animation time having passed between them. So the visuals on screen won't actually look like fluid motion even though the amount of the frame time in between frames is actually pretty much the exact same. Uh, this concept, you can look at this using PresentMon. The, uh, I think, as Steve said in the video, can it be put out into a graph? And the idea is, yes, they're going to give you this data, and then you can sign it kind of yourself, put it into a graph if you like as well. And I think that is very useful uh, for people reviewing not necessarily GPUs, I would say. I mean, a little bit. So the th the reason why I think Rich is trying to say that this is maybe better for game reviews than it is for GPU reviews is because this is going to be a per game thing. It won't be found across all titles, most likely, when you start seeing issues with this. Uh, it'll be a per game thing, and it could be a good way to say on top of looking at things like stutters from large frame times, whether a game has other aspects of it. This will encompass that as well. It, it will literally represent stutters in frame time, but it can go one level further. Uh, the reason why it's maybe not so good for GPUs reviews is because kind of you're looking at uh, the difference between GPUs and looking at the average experience. And usually if a game pre presents these issues, it's some sort of function of the driver and CPU interaction. Uh, and I don't think it's usually the difference between like an RTX 2060 and an RTX 2060 Super. Uh, or it won't even necessarily be the difference between an RX 5700 and an, and an 
RTX 2060 Super or something like that. They would be, this is something that I think that is more tied in with CPU things and to an aspect, the driver and the game itself. So I think it's much more game specific and much more CPU specific. So maybe in a CPU benchmark, you could look at this between uh, a CPU that has 3D cache and one that doesn't. And maybe there are differences in this value here. Maybe there isn't. But I think I think it isn't actually super useful for GPU reviews at the moment. Yeah, I mean, fundamentally, the purpose of a GPU review, uh, although I'd like to change that to a certain degree, is you know yes. how much is GPU A faster than GPU B? And um, these issues in terms of animation um, stutters, I guess we can call them, uh, they will be common to the game. You know, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the impact of the GPU, it may well actually be the case that <laughs> the faster your GPU is, the more errors you will get. <laughs> which is a yes, possibility. Yes, because you're because you're revealing the CPU constrainedness. Yeah. Yes. So this is one. This is why frame fra frame rate caps are so good, and we've seen it before, where you can actually, since the CPU CPU can be working on multiple frames at once, if you unencumber the CPU by inserting a frame cap so that it is not being fully utilized, it'll have more resources for the current frames being done. I actually bet this could be a great way to prove that you should not run games unlocked frame rate. Right. Oh, this is great. This is great. It could be <laughs> awesome. You're getting excited, I can tell. I'm this getting excited. If Tom was here, he'd be getting excited too. He'd like it. <laughs> but if Matrix was here, he'd be getting excited too. Um, yeah, I mean, yes, that's that's my sort of takeaway from that, which is that it's a, a valuable tool to have because it's something that isn't exposed just by you know counting the amount of frames that come out of a GPU and their persistence. And it gets you more to the, to the metal, so to speak. Uh, so I'm excited to see um, I'm excited to experiment with it, first of all, in, in known problematic games with stutter. And also the games, I mean, I'm thinking back, Alex, to the likes of Hogwarts Legacy and uh, Jedi Survivor. Jedi Survivor would probably show this off incredibly well. Because, yeah, because, obviously, I mean, you yeah. could actually see um, in your captured feed that there was an issue with, um, with, with movement that wasn't working in concert with frame rate. There was something very weird going on there. So mm -hmm. it'd be interesting to, to maybe sort of get down to the to the science of it, so to speak, and to actually know a bit more about what's going on there. Um, the only thing I've really got to say about the, the Gamers Nexus video beyond um, the awesomeness of it is that um, just the concept of the bar charts, man, you know, it's... It, it's never really sat right with me and, you know, errors per second doesn't really make sense to me when that data could be superimposed on the video, which actually gives you context about what the game is actually doing that could potentially cause these errors. So I do right. think that there's actually an additional step that's needed. Now, obviously, with Present One, you can you can use the overlays to do that. You can capture a feed from the game. But when it comes to competitive analysis, whether there is a difference between one GPU and another, Present One, well, you would actually just have two captured feeds and two graphs that aren't related more closely, and it would be a bit confusing. <laughs> so I think there's a, a foundation of stuff that we can do there to possibly add a bit more context to that. Um, was there anything else in that presentation? I mean, there was the latency stuff. They've got what looks like a software-based latency counter, um, right. which at the moment, FrameView has this, uses what's known as reflex markers, where if a game supports reflex, um, then you kind of know the beginning and the end of the frame based on input to to output, so to speak. It looks right. as though Intel now has a software solution to that, and it also has a hardware solution on top of that for increased precision. Uh, any any notes on that, Alex? I mean, I've got some thoughts on that. But yeah, I mean, I like the idea of this maybe working without reflex markers uh, and giving a good. You know, it doesn't need to be 100%, but it can at least show you variation. So you can maybe not trust the end number, but you can trust the fact that there's variation between the end number, between different uh, right. configurations. So that it would at least give you a scale where you don't know where the bottom of the X or the Y is, but you'd have a good sense, at least the differences. And I think that's very good to have. Uh, well, what do you think about the hardware, Rich? I'm the, curious. The, the hardware side of things, 
kind of looks like LDAP 2.0, which is fine, except that it's based on the concept that you press the button on the mouse and then there's a change in luminance on the screen. Uh, and then, you know, basically the time between those two points is calculated. And the issue I've had with that is that it's great for FPS games where you press a button, uh, some sort of weapon is fired and it causes a bright flash on screen. However, how would you use that in Jedi Survivor? How would you use it in Hogwarts Legacy? How would you use it in any given fighting game? At that point, it becomes extremely difficult to actually find those luminance points. And therefore, it's only, you know, in our experience with Eldar, unless this is doing something different, but I don't think it is, it's good for first person shooters and that's it, you know, and mm -hmm. this has been a real issue with mine. And this is why the the reflex marker thing uh, that NVIDIA has put into frame view is actually really, really good because you just get a running total of, uh, of, of latency and it doesn't require user input. And I suspect maybe what Intel is doing is similar to that, but without the markers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. It, latency is extremely important. Um, it's probably going to be the next big battleground because there's going to come a point, an end point, where you know frame generation is just going to fill in all of the holes up to the refresh rate of your monitor. I mean, that's the end game. AMD told us that at Gamescom. So at that point, what is the cost of that frame generation? And it's going to be latency. And you need a good way of measuring that. So, yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, Oliver, um, this isn't really your bag, no. PC benchmarking. <laughs> but I'm yeah. curious if you have any thoughts. Well, I think it's the, the question as to how to present this information is sort of interesting. I do think you need some kind of history that shows you yes. what the variance is in the current frame, because I think that's very useful with our frame time data that we that we display to people, because you can actually uh -huh. see, okay, here's the, you know, here's that frame time, here's that huge spike, you can see it coming up and then it's on screen and you see it and it's noticeable and it's <laughs> it's something that you can really measure and, and show to people. I think the averaging it out over many frames uh, over, over a period of seconds, it's not, to me, that's not, you know, now we're getting into territory that's not as interesting, personally. <laughs> Um, I agree with that. But I, I, I like that this should be a way to tackle some animation problems in games like Star Wars Jedi Survivor, like was mentioned, maybe like Dead Space as well, where you had some problems there. Mm -hmm. Dead Space does have some where, problems. <laughs> where, right. you know, you have unique frames without new animation, and, and that's a, obviously that's a, that's a big issue. But I think in, yeah. in most cases, frame time is still going to be a really useful metric, and obviously it's the only tool we have for console games, really examining the... Uh, the performance of console games and the performance variance in console games rather um, outside of an average mm -hmm. frame per second uh, figure. I'm really interested in seeing what this metric actually does in a CPU review where in theory your benchmark is going to be completely CPU limited because you look at the frame times when your CPU heavily CPU limited it's a total disaster. You don't want to play like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering whether it could actually work as a diagnostic tool of sorts for developers to actually improve some of that stuff um but like, right. like likely not <laughs> yeah i, I mean, mean it's cpu limited is 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 a disastrous scenario you just don't want to be there <laughs> sorry uh I, yeah i mean I, the the reason why i think that i don't i would love for this kind of a tool to uh be used by developers to figure out issues with animation in games and it would also point out issues in stuttering because it it tells you that as well too. It just tells you another layer on top of that. Yeah. But if you look at FCAT back in the day when that came out, I think that only really was really important for the IHV vendor wars. And it, I don't think it changed anything about games necessarily. I think it changed. I think it just changed basically whether or not Nvidia could show that Crossfire was worse. <laughs> and that was really about it. Um, but which, yeah, which I would, is a shame. Yeah. I mean, because which is a shame. because we use it, and when you put it on a video overlay, you get a much better insight into what is actually happening in a game. You can kind of detect when your CPU or GPU limited, and you can actually see, see the impact of that in in terms of the frame times. So um, yeah, yeah. I mean. Our tools are due a big overhaul, and this is actually a really interesting uh, addition that we want to add in. And it does look like moving to present one presents a whole uh, cornucopia of fascinating data that, if properly visualized, could be really transformational, I think, for both our reviews and our game reviews, hardware and software. Um, I agree. I don't really have too much more to say about this, except I'm looking to, uh, forward to going hands-on and actually seeing how useful the visualizations are. 